For those of you who don't know me, I'm Gail Gray. I'm the student aid coordinator here at Penn State Beaver, and I'm here to discuss with you, with you how early progress reports, or EPRs, and all other academic actions can affect your ability to qualify for student aid. Penn State's Office of Student Aid is required by federal regulation to monitor student progress toward a degree. The Federal Student Aid Satisfactory Academic Progress Standards requires three types of monitoring. The first type of monitoring is by degree status. That means that you have a C-level GPA by the end of your second year of attendance. At Penn State, students who are in degree status are automatically meeting that standard. Students who are dropped to non-degree status cannot receive financial aid. The second type of monitoring is time to degree limits. The limit is 150% of the credits required for your degree. So for instance, if your degree requires 120 credits, you multiply that one by 150% and that means you can attempt up to 180 credits before you reach the limit. Third, and the one most commonly a problem for most students, is the pace or completion rate of attempted courses. This is different from the university academic criteria for determining the scholarship necessary for degree seeking status. For this type of monitoring, students must earn at least 67% of all credits attempted. This includes all courses in which a student is enrolled in on the first day of a semester, all credits that are dropped or added at any point in the semester, all credits for which a student was enrolled or subsequently withdrew or failed, and all cr transfer credits from other schools that are accepted by Penn State. Earned credits include all credits completed with a grade D or better, including transfer credits. Failure to maintain a 67% completion rate of cumulative attempted credits at the end of a semester will result in a one-time only, one-semester warning period for the next semester, during which the student will continue to receive aid. Failure to meet the 67% completion rate requirement after that warning semester will result in a denial of financial aid in future semesters. The student aid programs affected by these reviews include all federal aid, meaning grants, loans, and work study, most private loans, and university scholarship and aid programs. This does not include the FIA state grant program, which has its own satisfactory academic progress standard set by the state, but which is very similar. Because EPRs are meant to be a warning to you that you, you are not currently performing up to ap academic standard, you should understand the consequences of F grades. If your F grade is a result of not attending class, your aid for that semester will be adjusted based on your last day of attendance. This is considered an unofficial drop. You will re be required to repay part or all of any federal or state aid that you receive for that class. Your bursar's account will be debited for the difference and you will owe money to the university. If all of your grades for a semester are F for non-attendance, your A will be adjusted according to federal regulations and you will be required to repay most or all federal and state aid funds that you receive for that semester. Let's talk a little bit about withdrawal and its effect on student aid. If you determine that you must withdraw from the university, you also need to understand the effect that withdrawal has on your ability to get aid in future semesters. Federal student aid is based on the percentage of time you are enrolled each semester. Depending on when you withdraw, your aid will be adjusted according to a federal formula, the state grant formula, and institutional policy. Tuition may be adjusted and you will most likely owe money to the university after withdrawal. If you stop attending classes without officially withdrawing, you are considered to be walking away. Any federal aid you receive during the semester will be subject to return based on the effective date of withdrawal. The withdrawal date is your last documented date of attendance and that's determined by your instructors. 
When you withdraw, the grace period prior to your loan repayment begins. If you re-enroll before the grace period ends, you will have a new grace period when you leave school. Otherwise, when you re-enroll, you will need to request an in-school deferment. In addition, anyone who withdraws from the university, even if it's just for one semester, is required to complete the loan exit interview on eLion. Students who don't complete the loan exit interview will have transcript and registration holds placed on their academic records. Lastly, future aid eligibility may be in jeopardy if you withdraw from school. If you withdraw mid-year, your aid for future semesters in that academic year will be canceled. If you process a re-enrollment request for an upcoming semester, you must contact the Office of Student Aid to request consideration for reinstatement of your aid. However, there's no guarantee that you'll receive the same aid as you were originally awarded. If you have any questions or concerns, if you're considering dropping or withdrawing, please feel free to stop into my office in the admission suite in the Student Union Building to discuss those concerns and any effects your ac academic activity will have on your student aid. Thanks and have a great semester.